Michael from Ronin Media and this is my review on the Panasonic Lumix GH4. So I've had the Lumix for quite some time now, I thought I'd do a review on it. First of all I bought it for about, I think it was about 1200 Australian dollars and then the lens, it was came in the kit but the lens was charged separately. I think the lens was five or six hundred dollars. It is a 14 to 140 uh, Lumix lens which is, has an aperture of 3.5 to 5.6. Um, not a bad lens but I do have a better one to put on this. I was just waiting for a speed booster uh, to fit a Canon lens onto this. There'll be more on that in another video. I'm going to do a review on the new lens and the speed booster, but let's just stick to the Lumix for now. So I bought the Lumix because of uh, the 4K video, watched, I watched a lot of videos, a lot of reviews, and was really, really happy with the quality of the video. Um, there's not many SLRs, well, it's not really an SLR because it's a micro four thirds camera, but um, we'll just call it an SLR from here on out. Um, there's not many other SLRs that uh, do video quite as well, especially in 4K. I did come from a Canon 60D, um, and the video was dreadful on that. It was, it was, I think it did 1080, but it was just really bad video. So um, I do have other video cameras. I've got a Canon Legria, I think it's a HF G25, and I'm filming this currently on a Canon uh, Legria Mini X, which is a mini, it's kind of like a vlogging camera, um, and it's it's very decent for the size. Anyway, back to the review for the tenth time. Um, so overall, I'm really, really, really happy with this camera. At first, um, when I was when I had my Canon camera, I was thinking, should I sell the Canon camera? And then I thought, I better do some tests. Um, Photo-wise, if this is better than the Canon, I will sell the Canon. If it's not, I'll keep the Canon just for photography and use this purely for videos. At first, I wasn't really happy with the photo quality out of this, but after playing with some settings, it did exceed the Canon. But it wasn't by much, and um, I think the 60D was a great camera. Um, I did end up selling it because this did a decent enough job um, to cover the photography side of things. So, yeah, um, low light footage isn't the best. It is pretty grainy at certain ISOs. Um, it could be better, but that's what the speed booster and the other lens I'll be getting uh, is supposed to kind of fix. Um, so it's a lot better in low light. The speed booster gets you an extra stop of light and things like that. So um, other than that, I think the video quality is awesome. Um, what we'll do first, I'll give you a quick tour. I'm not going to do an unboxing or any tell you any technical specs because that stuff's easily found on the internet. I think there's a million and one unboxings and probably reviews as well. But what I'll do first, I'll just give a quick tour of all the buttons and all the functions on the camera. Uh, not so much functions, just the buttons and things that you can see on the camera and then we'll get a bit more bit deeper into the review. So we'll start with a little uh, little tour of the front here. So you've just got some branding, Lumix, GH4, got your lens obviously uh, on the side here, side of this lens anyway you have the power OIS which is the optical image stabilization and then you have the lens release button here. We have a looks like an external flash that unscrews something under there. You have your shutter button, uh, you have the red eye deduction or flash LED just in there. I think that's about it on the front. Let's have a look on the top. On the top, you can see again the shutter button, you have a dial here, you've got uh, three quick access buttons to white balance, ISO and exposure. Uh, function button, uh, this little LED here tells you if you've got Wi-Fi connected, on and off switch and on LED. Uh, the dial here for all the different modes, obviously the flash, hot shoe, and here's another, that's just a shooting mode switch, so you can shoot from, uh, you can choose from, you know, single, single photo, multiple photo, like a uh, burst of photos, etc. Uh, so on this side, we have, sorry, it's hard to see. Uh, on this side, we've got headphones, AV out, and HDMI out there as well, which is good. On this side, you have the SD card door, uh, a remote, a slot for an external remote, and that's about it on that side. On the back, you have the fully articulating screen, which is really nice. Uh, playback button, function button there, which also, if you don't use custom functions, that'll switch the live viewfinder from the eyepiece to the screen. Uh, what normally happens is you use both, so if you put your eye to the eyepiece the screen turns off if you move your eye away the screen turns back on um, 
So up here we have, sorry I don't know how bright that is. Up here we've got the autofocus mode, so you've got uh, autofocus, um, I can't remember what that one is. Uh, there's AFS, AFC and manual focus. Obviously manual focus is manual focus. AFC, I think it's autofocus continuous. And I think autofocus S might be smart, which means it, it detects certain things. I'm pretty sure, I, can't, I usually just have it on manual, so I'm not too sure. Sometimes auto. Uh, you have a record button here. Another function button here, which if untouched is a quick menu. Then you have this here, which is the focus, uh, sorry, yeah, focus points. Uh, then you've got the button here, which changes the display that you're seeing on the camera. And another jog wheel here, main menu button there. And another function button here, which also deletes the photo. Um, so let's have a look on the bottom. I've got my Manfrotto mount on the bottom, but usually there's nothing there apart from your quarter inch screw and battery door, just like that. So that's nice, nice and solid. Um, I think that's about it for all the buttons and things, so let's get back to the review. So the camera itself is quite easy to use. That's just a quick shot of the, uh, the screen there. So it's got a very really nice screen. If you put your eye up to the viewfinder, the screen turns off. Just like that. So you can switch that on so they're always on or always off or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's quite easy to use. Some of the things that were a bit annoying is that in the menu, um, some of the functions are hidden or they're not there until you change something else, but it doesn't exactly tell you that. It'd be nice if it said, this is disabled until you do this or something like that. So if you've got the dial in photo mode and then you're looking for something, um, you might not find it till it's in video mode. Uh, and, some, and also in photo mode, it's got settings for video, which it doesn't really make sense. So you can set them in either menu, but it's a bit weird. Um, battery life, fantastic. Image quality is amazing, especially the 4K video. So in uh, 1080 mode, so 1920 by 1080 mode, it also has variable frame rate. So you can have pick frame rates from two. Try and get that in the video there. Frame rates from two, all the way up to, is it 96? Yeah, 96, so you can get a bit of, bit of slow-mo happening. Um, but I find the quality drops off because it is a much lower data rate and it's, and it's 1920 by 1080 as well. So you can't do that in 4K. Um, yeah, other than that, I find the image quality is amazing. Um, photos are really good. Battery life I've found is really good. I don't know if it's good as the, as good as the Canon, but then again, I didn't really use the Canon for video. It was just photo, snap a few here and there, turn it off for a week or two, use it again. So I think that contributes to a good battery life. This, I'm shooting 4K, I've been using it heaps. So um, I'd say the battery life is very good for considering what it's doing. Um, I love the, love the articulating screen, I love the viewfinder. Um, the thing that was a bit weird as well for me, just a picky little thing, is that the, the playback button is here. I wish it was somewhere here like it was on the Canon because when you're jogging through your photos and stuff, or you've taken a photo, usually you're holding your camera with your right hand, you can just hit the playback button with your thumb and see what you've done, whereas here you've got to kind of re-grab the camera and press the playback button. But they're just little niggly things. It's a great camera, I highly recommend it. It's not a fully in-depth review or anything technical. Just a quick review of what my thoughts were on the camera. Um, that's about it. Another good feature actually is the Wi-Fi. Um, you can control almost the whole camera from your phone, including focus. It is a bit delayed, but it, uh, it is pretty good. If you have to be away from the camera, you just need to make a quick adjustment or, or something like that. Um, so let me just run through a quick pros and cons. Pros, it's very small and very lightweight because it is a micro four thirds camera. There's no uh, mirror inside, so it can be smaller and it's very lightweight compared to the Canon. First thing I noticed, the Canon was very heavy. Um, whereas this, it's quite small and it's very light. Um, the new lens I've got is gonna make this camera a lot bigger and a lot heavier, but the way it comes is pretty, pretty light and pretty small. Uh, video quality is amazing. I love that it does 4K um, with, from multiple frame rates. I usually shoot in 25, but I think it does not sure what it does 4K, the max frame rate is. I think it might be 30. Um, could be, no, yeah, 1080 does 50 frames. I think, yeah, it's around 25, 30 is max for 4K. Um, love the viewfinder, love the screen. Um, love all the functionality. It does have built-in time-lapse, so you don't need to set your camera up. Uh, especially to do one, you just go to the menu, time-lapse, how many photos you want to take, and it tells you how long it's going to take to do that. It's really good. 
uh, HDR mode built in as well, so it will automatically take the three shots. I don't know if I like that, I think I preferred the manual method of doing it, just, you know, setting your uh, shooting mode to burst and just setting three different exposures. I kind of like that, but it does make it easier. The only thing, it, it does combine, <coughs> sorry, it does combine the HDR image in the camera, which I don't like because I prefer to get it to my computer, do some processing and get it to look the way I like. So to do HDR properly, I think you'd have to do it manually. So set, take a photo of it, low exposure, normal, and then high. Um, the audio, uh, so still on the pro, sorry. The battery life, as I said, um, that's about it. It's really, really good. Cons, so things that I'm not really a fan of. The playback button where it is. The low light could be better, but I'm hoping that's gonna get a lot better with my new lens and the speed booster. Um, I think that's really all for cons. I'm, really happy with this camera overall and I'd, I'd highly recommend it especially as someone who does do a lot of video it is one of the best cameras you can buy to do video without spending a really stupid amount of money and buying a red camera and i've seen footage of this compared to a, a red cinema camera and to be honest from what i saw they couldn't tell the difference most of the time there's a video on youtube uh, where someone films in a, with a red and a GH4 doesn't tell you which footage is which and I've watched it and I really couldn't tell the difference so there's some parts where you say you know that looked nice it could have been the red but it could have been this it takes stunning videos so what I'm going to do now is just show a quick uh, quick test footage from the camera it's nothing fancy just went out got some quick shots um, again highly recommended thanks for watching uh, I'll leave you with the test footage. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching.